Hi, I'm Joey Jablonski. I'm an architect at Dell within the Big Data Solutions team. I'm here today with Rob Hirschfeld. He's an architect with our Crowbar software. Rob and I are going to walk through the series of steps necessary to utilize Crowbar to deploy Hadoop within a cluster for utilization and running MapReduce jobs and storing unstructured data. We're going to jump through a series of steps within the Crowbar software within the UI showing how to configure, how to deploy the Hadoop environment, as well as how to test at the end and show that it is operating correctly. Thanks, Joey. And I should note that um, we already have gone through a, a series of videos showing you how to build the open source version of Hadoop on CentOS and also how to actually deploy it to get to this state. So there's a couple of videos before this, um, but this is a great place to start if you just want to see how, how we're running Hadoop. So, uh, so uh, where we left off from the, the install video to just get Crowbar up and running was we, we built the system up. This is the nodes view, so you can see that we've got a system admins, the Crowbar node, and then we've got four nodes here that are, are basically just ready to go. They have the base CentOS on them, um, they have the Chef client running so we can deploy things, but we haven't deployed anything at all on them. Uh, and with the way Crowbar works is we can jump in here and see all the pieces and parts and, and what's going on. Uh, the real meat of what's going to happen is going to happen under the bar clamps pieces, and uh, I'll, I'll step into all bar clamps and then you can take over when we look at the Hadoop one specifically. Uh, bar clamps are the way that Crowbar modularizes functionality, so everything in Crowbar is set up as a bar clamp. Um, we have a lot of videos on that, so I'm not going to dwell on, on bar clamps and how they work. Uh, there's a lot of different pieces in it, and one of the things we added in this last release was the ability to have a selected version, so you don't have to see all that clutter when you go to deploy Hadoop. Um, and this is where I turn it over to you to help guide us through that Hadoop deploy. Absolutely. Uh, if you could bring up the slide I sent you earlier relative to the different types of Hadoop nodes. So within a Hadoop environment, it's very common that we have different types of systems doing different types of work. The three main types of nodes that we're going to be deploying today are what we call a master node. Master nodes are going to run both the name node functionality and the job tracker within the Hadoop environment. We're also going to be deploying what we call edge nodes. Edge nodes are going to be utilized for running external services, for accessing the Hadoop environment from outside, just a general place for running applications within the Hadoop space. We're also going to be deploying what we call slave nodes. Slave nodes are what tend to be most numerous in Hadoop environments, and they contain both the data node functionality, essentially where you're going to be storing all of your distributed data, as well as the task tracker, the functionality that allows you to run distributed jobs on top of the data in your environment. Do you want to go back to the bar clamp screen? So within the Hadoop context of Crowbar, we've built a series of bar clamps specifically for deploying core Hadoop as well as some of the tools people utilize with Hadoop on a regular basis. The Hadoop bar clamp listed at the top of the list is going to be utilized to deploy the core Hadoop functionality, the data nodes, the slave nodes, the task tracker, the job tracker, and all the libraries necessary. We also have a bar clamp for deploying Zookeeper and Hive and Scoop. These are three very commonly used ecosystem components within the Hadoop space. We're not going to be demonstrating the installation of these three today, but they are available for download in the open source community so you can test them yourselves. Right. So, so everything we're showing today is in Dell's open source and available through the GitHub that where Dell publishes Crowbar. Correct. And finally today we're going to be deploying the PIG uh, bar clamp as well. PIG is a high level language for creating and running MapReduce jobs within Hadoop. We're going to be deploying PIG mainly to show the operation of the Hadoop cluster. PIG is a very good tool to test and ensure that the cluster is working as designed and that you deploy it properly at the end of the process. Cool. Let's get started. Excellent. So the first thing that we're going to do, in, and this is normal Crowbar operation, is we're going to build uh, the bar clamp for Hadoop has the template of how you deploy Hadoop, all the knowledge and libraries and things like that, but it's just a template. So to actually turn that template into something we can deploy, we need to create a proposal. So it's very simple. I can just expand here, create a proposal. That process is going to take me to an editing screen for the Hadoop proposal. Uh, and wow, the Hadoop proposal is unique in the number of settings and configuration options that it, that it exposes. Um, it's a lot of different choices here. There is. The, uh, the, the configuration and deployment of Hadoop is not an easy task. There's well over 300 different configuration parameters. As part of the bar clamp, we've set defaults for all of these so that when you do deploy them in your environment, you can know that after the deployment, things will be working operationally. There's also a lot of tuning that can be done after the fact to optimize performance by setting various settings differently. 
wow, I'm, I'm glad we don't have to go through these line by line. <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot of options. Um, but to me, that's one of the things that helps underline the the power of Crowbar, right? We're we have something that works by default right out of the box, but you can tweak and tune it. It's not set to your environment. Networking can be changed, mm -hmm. VLANing, you know, all sorts of different things. And it's not limited to Dell hardware, of course. Exactly, so. exactly. And, and, and Crowbar is very powerful in the sense that we make a lot of recommendations based on Dell best practices and community best practices, but every single one of them is tunable. We don't force the user of Crowbar into any specific setting or configuration. Makes a lot of sense. So in this case, these are the nodes that we have available in the system. And then Crowbar's already made some recommendations. So it's already picked a master node, secondary name node. Looks like it puts that on the admin server. Uh, so that's basically a, a passive, a backup server. It makes a lot of sense to use it like that. And then we've got these um, slave nodes and edge nodes. So it looks like we have enough capacity to run pretty much every role that's necessary to run Hadoop with this system. Exactly. And Hadoop's quite flexible if you're deploying smaller environments that you're just using for testing or developing new applications. These services can, can be combined onto fewer systems, or if you're deploying larger environments, they can be separated out for much larger scale. Cool. So one of the things that we can do with Crowbar is choose which nodes get deployed. Um, in this case, the layout looks pretty good, but normally I can just drag and drop these nodes around and, and change things out. So uh, if everything looks good, we can just apply that proposal. Uh, when we apply it, Crowbar is going to go through and actually make some choices about how this is going to be deployed. Uh, it'll set everything up like that. It's going to turn over and start this proposal going. So this proposal is now becoming an active proposal. It's processing it. Uh, and over here with the nodes, uh, the nodes are going to be remaining in ready state. So you'll see the nodes. These guys aren't going to change right now. We're actually about to change, add some your UI context. So when a proposal is being applied to a nodes, you'll see the same spinner. So that'll help people know that things are going on. Uh, for now, what's happening is in the background, the system's actually getting set up. So the VMs that we have running on our system over here, once again, they're not going to look like much because the system's operating in the background. But under the cover, chef, the chef client, the chef server is talking to the chef client and giving it a whole bunch of instructions to set things up. Um, one of the things that's useful to do um, is to show this is the chef server that is running behind the scenes. Uh, so these are the nodes. Uh, it's important to understand, Crowbar actually deploys a full Chef server, the open source version of Chef server, as part of their deployment. And a lot of the uh, bar clamps are really backed by Chef cookbooks and recipes, and that does the deployment work. We don't, we don't reinvent anything. Uh, we leverage Chef as much as we possibly can. So you'll see in, in here the roles um, for setting up uh, Hadoop are all here. These are open sourced along with everything else. So uh, you can see how these work and operate on them. And if you find uh, changes that are necessary or bugs or, or want enhancements, please, uh, part of what we want to do is encourage the community to submit those back uh, and help us make these stronger, stronger uh, cookbooks, recipes, and bar clamps. Uh, it's also interesting to note uh, part of the deployment includes a Nagios server. So the Nagios server actually is, is built and it will do the monitoring by default of the different hosts in the system. Um, and it'll take it'll actually as you add more capabilities, it'll add those to the monitoring groups. And we also include Ganglia. So it'll it'll bring up Ganglia and it'll monitor the performance on the system. So as you take a Hadoop job, right? Hadoop jobs can be very performance intensive. You can actually watch that performance impact using Ganglia. Exactly. And these are very important tools, both from the visibility they provide into the distributed Hadoop cluster, as well as the fact that these are all open source tools as well. So if you're already leveraging these sorts of tools in your environment, you can leverage the existing monitoring infrastructure, or more importantly, you can use this infrastructure to build out and monitor additional things in your environment. Excellent. Yeah, you can actually see we, we shut this system down to take a snapshot before we started the demo. So there's actually a little gap in some of our history. Um, and you can see as we brought more nodes up, it started... We had some, some load on the system bringing up all those nodes. That's pretty neat. So now we've got Hadoop, Hadoop and running. The status shows green. That means all the proposals have been applied. Uh, all the nodes are set up and reporting in. What's our next step? Well, now that we have an operating Hadoop cluster, we want to deploy some tools to use on top of it. The core Hadoop installation is really only going to install two sets of functionality. HDFS, which is the distributed file system for Hadoop, 
as well as the MapReduce layer, essentially the tools, the libraries, and components necessary to run MapReduce jobs on top of that file system. By themselves, those tools are not particularly useful. There's a lar very large ecosystem of tools that have been built around Hadoop to make it easier to use and to integrate Hadoop with other environments. Today, we're going to be utilizing the bar clamp for PIG. PIG is a language for expressing programming for Hadoop environments. So we're going to go ahead and build a proposal for the PIG bar clamp and apply that as well onto the edge nodes. Okay, so this is exactly the same type of thing. Here's the attributes that are available. Uh, for pig, and then here's the the what? This is the one edge node in our system, right? Correct. So if we went back and looked at the Hadoop bar clamp, this would be the edge node. Correct. Okay. So just for note, it's the 49-F3. We'll go look up that some of that information in the nodes view after we're done applying. So I can just apply, and we're we're ready to go. Exactly. It'll install install the necessary binaries, lay out the appropriate configuration, so that next time someone logs into the edge node, they're able to run pig and write jobs for MapReduce. Cool. Let's go back over here. Cool. So this is just going to take a couple a couple minutes while it actually lays down those bits. Absolutely. This doesn't take very long at all. The pig binaries Oops. are relatively small. <laughs> that was very fast. <laughs> Didn't I blinked? All right. So. Um, so that's pig. So how do we test this? How do we know that it did something? So the easiest way to test is to ensure that the pig software can properly connect to the Hadoop distributed file system in the MapReduce framework. What you can do is use an SSH client, client to okay. log into the edge node via SSH, and then we can get a pig prompt that way. Cool. So one of the things to note here is uh, there's a lot of data in, on this part of the UI because this is all the information that Chef is giving us back. Uh, I'm here. This is that, that node I wanted to pay attention to. And then you'll notice the client, the pig interpreter, is actually on this node. And when I click here, it'll highlight um, that, which node that is. Uh, so I need, its, I, I need its IP address on the 124 network. So I'll grab that. And let me bring up my SSH client. So over here. So we're going to need to log in. Oops, wrong thing. Uh, we're going to need to be root on that node. So let me go. Set that up, and let's open that up. So here we are with our edge node SSH. Uh, it's root. Crowbar is going to be the password. That's our default. So we're in now. This looks good. And what's our first step? So now that we're on the edge node, essentially, you should be able to type pig and hit enter, and you'll get a prompt that says grunt. So we were able to successfully connect to both okay. the job tracker as well as to the Hadoop distributed file system. By seeing that grunt prompt, it tells us that at least the connection was successful. We're now at a point that you can load data into your Hadoop distributed file system and write a job using MapReduce to analyze that data. Hmm. Wow, that sounds like a big job. A little bit more than the two minutes we have remaining in this video, maybe. Definitely outside the scope of, of this, but at this point you have a, a whole fully functional Hadoop cluster you can start analyzing data, storing data on. That's pretty cool. Excellent. So I, to get out of this, I can exit grunt? Correct. Okay. And that'll take uh, you me can back quit here. Grunt, sorry. Oh, quit. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So I quit Grunt. I'm back to the prompt. Just as a note, if you're watching this video and things don't quite work the way you're expecting, the universal fix um, for for Crowbar is to do a Chef uh, Chef client. What Chef client would do is. Um, Chef Client will go ahead and basically rerun all the deployment, make sure that everything's right and set up and check all the names and things like that. So Chef Client run is um, always the first step. It's effectively like rebooting a, a Windows machine. Um, it makes sure that things are set up and tuned correctly. So always like to pass on a, a troubleshooting tidbit in the video so that if something goes wrong, you don't, you don't have to go searching for help. It's going to be right there. That'll solve 80% of, of issues that you might run into. Uh, any closing comments? Definitely encourage everyone to, to go to the GitHub site. We have all this source code available for download. You can do your own builds, and there's a wealth of documentation on how to do those builds, how to build your own crowbar environment, how to build your own bar clamps, and how to extend the capability we've already put out there. Excellent. And I'll, I'll note that what we've been doing is the, the wiki on GitHub for crowbar is actually supporting all of the bar clamps. So the, the you have one place to go for all the support and information that we have. So with that, happy Hadooping. Great. Thank you so much for your time today, Rob. Thank you, Joey.